Hi friends, my name is Megan and welcome to my 2023 end of year whip parade. Today is Sunday, it's December the 31st, New Year's Eve, and I have brought all of my works in progress, for the most part, <laughs> over here to share with you today. Um, I know that I love uh, whip parade videos, they're my very favorite type of wall soup to watch. Um, and I often find a lot of new people to subscribe to around this time of year and then again uh, kind of in the summertime when people do like their mid-year whip parade so if you are new here uh, thank you for coming and spending some time with me today and if you're returning I hope you enjoy seeing all of my works in progress here at one time. Um, I do not have a lot of 2023 stats to share today. Uh, sometime around June July-ish, I fell off of writing in my book of days, so I don't know how many starts I had, I don't know how many finishes I had. I do believe I started 2023 with 34 works in progress, and I am ending it with 37. I brought 36 of them here to share with you. Uh, the only one I did not bring was my From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy Monthly Quakers. Um, I've completed January through September and while I do consider that one work in progress I do count each finish as a separate one so yeah that's fine but anyways I've got a lot here to share I'm gonna have to definitely pause sometimes I've got four stacks of things here um, so I'm gonna have to reset <clears throat> at least two times and I think we should probably just get into it because this might be a little long so the very first work in progress I have to share with you today is my very oldest whip. I started this, I want to say June of 2018. And that is uh, the Desiderata by Lifetime Samplers. Uh, this, for part of this past year, this has been my focus piece. Um, when I choose a work in progress to focus on, I do work on it every other month as a priority to try to get it done. And that's been really successful for me. So this is what this project looks like. I'm stitching it on a six piece of 16 count Lamb's Wool Ada in all of the called for DMC and it lives in this cute little bag here. And here's where I am. Oof pretty big. Uh, so I believe I ended last year with this halfway done. I'll pull it in so you can kind of see it up close. It's very, um, there's a lot of detail to this. A lot of color changes. So she's pretty big. Um, a lot of back stitch and stem stitch. So she's, oh, big girl but I do plan on finishing her for sure in um, 2024 so that is my first work in progress uh, the next one I have is from Carriage House Samplings uh, this is Agnes Rowlandson and this is um, the antique sampler down here and they do chart this with the full antique or this little modified version with just the bottom seam and the border. And this is the one that I'm doing. It says Agnes Rowlandson's work, aged 11. Um, this is from 1849. In the midst of life, we are in death. Each step we move is toward the grave. I started this um, in October, not this past October, the October before. I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count millstone by LFA Linens. And it lives in this um, Mommelie bag by Emily C. The Collective Possessions. There is pet hair everywhere. <laughs> uh, love this bag. I am stitching this in all of the called for DMC. And here's where I am. So the first year that I started this, I just got some of that border done. Um, just the vine part of the border. I think I was sick when I started this, so I didn't get very far. And so this year I put in a lot of the little, I don't know what, I don't know what these are supposed to be on the border, but I put them in. <laughs> and then I added in this box and all of the text there. So 
that was pretty good progress this year. I'm pretty happy with that. I love this fabric. I think you can buy this from them now. It was a fabric of the month. I was part of their club and I got this one and they stopped doing the fabric of the month, but I would definitely order more of this. It's very, very pretty. All right. Next, I have Quaker Gardens. This is by Hello from Liz Matthews. It's like this. I started this maybe in April of this year, March or April, I can't remember. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count copper linen by Lakeside Linens using this HDS silk in Mystery um, 101 beautiful blue. It was in this little uh, polka dot bag with some blackbird fabric on the inside. And here's our mat. Uh, I did not leave myself very much margin on this, but um, I'm my own framer, so <laughs> that's future Megan's problem. Um, but this is really nice. Uh, the linen is um, pretty thick, so I'm able to use one strand on this 32 count, and I'm very happy with the coverage of this. Be excited to pull this back out in the spring. Uh, one thing about me is that I love a Maryland sampler. I am from Maryland. Um, and uh, luckily, mainly I think thanks to Queenstown samplers, there's an abundance of uh, Maryland samplers to choose from. I've been collecting quite a few of her uh, charts over the years and I think this is the first one of hers that I've started. I don't think I'm fibbing about that. I started this chart for uh, the New Hampshire Stitchers Baptist School Sale uh, in September. And this is Mary Pet Sampler, Baltimore, Maryland, 1831. She's a big girl. Definitely uh, considered a bap to me. It says, uh, a reproduction sampler from the collection of the Oblate Sisters of Providence in Baltimore, Maryland, the first African-American Roman Catholic sisterhood. Um, and I learned about this sampler in kind of a funny way. Um, I used to be a buyer uh, for a, uh, a food service distributor, and the Oblate Sisters were clients of ours. Um, they bought their milk from us and I remember seeing their names come up uh, and I always wondered what they were so I ended up looking them up finding out who they were and then finding out there is a sampler and you actually can buy the sampler directly from them. So I will be sure to link uh, where you can purchase this from down below. But so this is a Baltimore sampler. <clears throat> it lives in this Black Eyed Susan bag that I made. Um, Black Eyed Susan is the Maryland State Flower, and I'm using all of the called for DMC, which is quite a lot. I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count vintage Luna linen by Lakeside Linens, and here's where I got. So this is one page. As you can see, this is a nice big piece of linen for a nice big project. Here I got one page. Uh, this is a herringbone stitch border, which I was very intimidated by prior to starting this, and it's actually really, really easy to do. Um, so I didn't start this for a long time because of that, and I'm glad that I did. Um, and there is quite a bit of over one on this first page. Uh, fun fact, this is all in the wrong color, but I'm just going with it. There's all these birds. I wonder, can you see this little bird? Sorry, it's late in the day, so the lighting is not great, but uh, my little bird there. Anyways, I love that. I'm excited to get back to that again this year, which I feel like every time you watch a parade, everything somebody shows, it's like, oh, I'm excited to get back to it. And that's great. That's such a, a great feeling to know that you've got all of these um, beautiful things that you're excited about to work on. So, all right, another Maryland sampler is Ms. Mary Claire Carroll, 1738. Uh, it says this is the oldest known Maryland sampler, and this is by Samplers Revisited. This is a, a picture picture, so it's a little difficult to show. Um, this is a big girl. <laughs> this is a New Year's sampler. 
um, it's dated January the 1st, 1738, and they started it in 2021 on New Year's Day. I was uh, down and out with COVID, and I started this. I'm stitching this with all of the called for DMCs on a piece of 38 count Wayfarer's Cloak by Legacy Linen. Um, it was in this little Maryland bag that I have, and I've got. Um, I think this came from Redbubble, maybe. I think I searched like Maryland matte bag, and then I've got a little flag um, bag in here for my threads and this little Lafayette bag. Um, there's a statue of Lafayette down in my town. So, anyways, here's that, and I am almost at the halfway point on this. <laughs> Uh, here we are almost halfway there I got to let's see this section this year um, and there are big freeform embroidered flowers that go here and I didn't really want to start start them um, because I don't want to get them crushed in my q-snaps but I did do a little bit of that satin stitch there there's a lot of satin stitch in this but so like this is <laughs> It will not take up this whole piece, but as you can see, if I'm not quite at the halfway point, um, I think the next band underneath gets me there. So, she's big, but she's beautiful. And uh, next time I uh, pull her out, which will actually be this month, I'll, um, I'll read the verse and everything. It's on there. Okay, um, speaking of... COVID. This was the 2020 pandemic sampler uh, is my next work in progress. This is by uh, Christine, who is Cersei Girl on Instagram. This is not um, obviously a great printout, but it's the one I have. Um, this was a free pattern that she released, um, and she just asked that if you could, you made a donation. Um, I'm sure all the information is still on her Instagram. So, there's that. I'm stitching it with the called for DMC on a piece of 36 count My Little Dove by x Design. And it lives in this stickle bag here. And this year I made it to the halfway point on this project. This is a big project. <laughs> so, there it is, the halfway point. Um, I do have quite a bit of stitching left on those big houses, but that's okay. Um, this is a this is a very fun project to work on. I'm stitching it two over two on the 36 count to get a nice full coverage. Um, the border is intense. <laughs> the border does take quite a bit of time and is quite a bit of stitching, but I'm going to say that it is absolutely worth it because this is turning out beautifully. I would say most samplers, I usually work on them to get a page finish, and, that, and that's kind of where I end it for the year. Um, so this might be three more years. We'll see. Uh, the next sampler that I have to share with you is by Just Stitching Along, and this is Miss Lucy Calcutt, uh, 1825. She looks like this. I plan on, after I'm done with the Desiderata, this will be my next um, focus piece. Because I love her and, um, I'm stitching her on 25 count that I dyed myself over one and I think that that's what's keeping me from making a lot of progress on this. Not that the stitching, it's it's not hard to stitch over one on 25 count. I think I just get in my head about not wanting to make a mistake because I don't want to rip out on 25 count. I need to get over that a little bit. So uh, what did I do this year? I think I finished this uh, third page here and I brought the red border down. Uh, this project, I think, I'm not sure if I said, I am stitching this on um, with all the cloth for DMC and it lives in this uh, delicious threads bag. And that's where she is. So as you can see, I got the red border all done. Uh, if you see like little um, Threads hanging, those are my like my page markers <laughs> to make sure that I was counting correctly. I did not want to miscount on that border. And 
Here's a little close up where she is. She's beautiful. I, I love stitching it um, over one is really making the colors look vibrant and it's just, this is gorgeous. And I do have um, Lucy Cow Cut 1826 as well. Um, but I can't do that one until I do this one. <laughs> I don't know that I'll stitch the next one over one, but yeah. So like I said, this will definitely be a focus piece after the Desiradata is done. My next work in progress, I don't have a cover photo for. Um, I'm trying to do like limited editing in this video um, just because I think it might be long and it's gonna take a long time to upload. Um, but if I think about it, I will put in a cover picture here. And this project is Rosina Disery 1820 by Works by ABC. Uh, this project lives in this cute little bag um, by Diana. It is Kismet Stitches. And I am stitching it on a piece of 28 count Monaco that was coffee and tea dyed um, using all the cloth for DMC. And I feel like this always shows like more harsh than it is. Like it, like that looks very harsh to me in this light. Uh, in real life, it is not nearly, it doesn't look that crazy, I guess. Um, but here's where I am. I've got, I am two thirds of the way done. I've got three pages, or three or four pages, I can't remember, whatever is on this side left to do, and I do anticipate finishing this project um, this year. So there is quite a bit of over one stitching, which is actually why I chose the Monaco. Um, Monaco is a cotton blend, I believe, and it's very sturdy, I find, for doing over one stitching, and all of that verse is over one. So, so she's on the way. Uh, she should be done this year. That's very exciting. All right, next pile. <laughs> Oops. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, the next project I have to share with you is one I started last January. Um, I was listening to a couple of different like Baba Yaga books last January, and so I started this pattern that had been in my stash for a while. It's the Baba Yaga Sampler by Thread Sewer. It's a one color sampler. It's very cute. I am stitching it with um, this blue color. It's a color in cotton um, mist dye. Sometimes they offer, like, I think this was a 20 yard pack of this. So I'm using that, and it lives in this cute little bag here. I'm stitching it on a piece of 20 count. Vintage Country Mocha Ada. And this was the only one I didn't get ironed because it was upstairs because I was going to steal some fabric from it. <laughs> but anyways, this is where I'm at. This is the first page. I, I don't remember if the page underneath is a full page or not. I haven't, like I said, worked on it since last January. So it'll probably come out in either January or February of this year to be worked on. It's fun. That border, um, like once you get into a groove with it, it actually goes by pretty quickly. So I like that one a lot. Um, this next sampler I'm super excited about because this should also be a finish this year. I'm almost done. Uh, this is Hannah Hetherington by From the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. So there are a lot of different options in this chart. I feel like this chart is so so worth every penny. Um, so you get the big sampler, and then you get these two little adaptations. Um, each of them are charted differently. So if I'm, let's see, I think this one is charted in Dinky Dyes, this one is charted in Gloriana, and I think this one's charted in Weeks Dye Works. But it's charted so that you can pick any of those colorways to do any any of them. And then each of the different dyers, the Dinky Dyes, the Gloriana, or the Weeks, has its own separate DMC conversion. That's amazing. Anyways, I chose the Gloriana colorway for the entire sampler. I am stitching this on a piece of 36 count driftwood, which I think is by XG Design. And all of the 
these beautiful Gloriana's. Uh, there is one uh, thread gatherer in here too, or silken colors, yeah, that lighter blue. These are beautiful, but a joy to stitch with. Uh, this lives in this cute little quilting, uh, quilting with Nico bag. And here's where I am. I'm going to let this bottom part drop. Here's where I am. I just have one page left to finish. She is glorious. Oh, what a joy. This has been a total joy to stitch. I love her. I absolutely love her. And then on the other part of this fabric is um, 1905 Bird <laughs> by Bendy Stitchy that I need to uh, cut off. Beautiful. All right, uh, the next sampler that I have to share with you also should be finished this year. She's almost done as well. And that is Ms. Anna Omen, um, 1873 by Leela Studio. Love her. Uh, she lives in this Halloween bag for no reason. Obviously not a Halloween chart, but that's okay. Um, she's being stitched on a piece of 36 Count Ancient by Picture This Plus using Mosail Bilbao, which is this beautiful blue. This is um, a little thread keep from Shakespeare's Peddler. I think it was in the Advent box. That's Ann Dale. Oh, hang on. Sorry about that. Um, Cora is upstairs with Aaron and she was barking at something. Anyways, uh, so I was talking about Anna and here's where she is. Um, I think she's stunning and I love her so much. And I just have two little pages down at the bottom and she will be all done. I love her on this fabric. I already have um, another project. Uh, she cites a bird, I think, five blackbird designs I'm going to put on a little bit of this that's left. So love, love, love that project. Am I saying that about everyone? I can't remember. I hope so, because I do love them all. Um, all right, next up was my New Year New Start from last year uh, and that is the Beatrix Potter Quaker Sampler by Stitchy Box. Um, Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, uh, she went to England and saw this in real life. Um, this is, I believe the, this is a black and white printout obviously, I think the original is in like browns. Um, anyway, she went and saw it and then a bunch of us started it for New Year's last year. I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count vintage quicksilver by Lakeside Linens using mostly um, DMC 3, I'm sorry, 535, which is this gray. Uh, and there's a couple little accent bits, and that'll be in silky white. <clears throat> Lives in this bird lady bag. And here's where I got to last year. So I wanted to be sure that it was going to fit. <laughs> so I did um, go ahead and do one page finish up top. And then I took the borders down for the Quaker motifs down to the very bottom to make sure that it would fit okay on this piece of fabric. It's pretty big. Um, yeah, but she's lovely to work on. I love stitching Quakers. Um, and so I think that she'll probably come back out in January of this year as well maybe I'm not sure I might move across the top to get to the other side that way I can cut off whatever extra fabric I have and go from there all right so this next one she might she might be my favorite sampler don't tell the others <laughs> um and this is Smoky Mountain Stitches and Woodall 18 47. It's reproduction. 
That's what she looks like. Big, beautiful white deer. Um, this chart is not necessarily super easy to read. I do believe there's a PDF option available. Um, and when I, I think it's charted in silk. And I went with the DMC and when I pulled the DMC, it did not necessarily look like this. So, sorry, I'm sure there's somebody outside walking because Cora is not happy. Um, anyways, when I pulled the DMC, it didn't necessarily look like this. So I did make some adjustments to make it look more like this picture. Um, but I think she is amazing. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm stitching her in some of the call for DMC, some of them of my choosing. And what's in this bag here? I did get some silks that I'm thinking about for the grass at the bottom, but we'll see um, when we get to that point. This is being stitched on a piece of 28 count smoke linen by Perman. And here's where she is. Hope you guys can see her okay. Uh, these flowers are amazing. <laughs> like, I I just, I think this is one of the prettiest things I've ever stitched. Uh, she's going to be big. She's going to take up most of this fabric, I believe. Um, and I want to say I've got three pages done. I'm not sure. I don't remember. It's been a while since I worked on her. I feel like she'll come out in the spring. It's definitely got some spring vibes to her. I know exactly where I want to hang her. I just love her so much. I love her big on this fabric. She's just a dream. Total dream. Uh, the next project I have here is by a company. I'm guessing it's Designs um, DHC. It's in French, I'm not sure. This is Mustard Flowers. Uh, beautiful. This chart is hand-drawn and um, a little difficult to read. I've had to make copies to be able to highlight. But she's beautiful. I'm stitching... Oh, she lives in this blackbird bag. I'm stitching her on a piece of Sahara by Zweigert, I think. Um, I don't have the tag here with me. I think it's Sahara though. Either way, and I'm stitching it in DMC 336. And here's where I got to. So I just did the, because I have, I think a half yard of this fabric. I did the uh, border just enough to be able to cut it down to a manageable size and just started on the inside border there. So I've gotten too far on this one, but she is very, very pretty. The next project I have, I started um, in November. Cross Stitch Kate and I share a birthday. And she was starting eight projects and this was one of them and I had it and I was like, you know what, I'll start it with you too. So this is the Woodpecker by Cottage Garden Sampling. You're in the wood number nine. I'm stitching this in the called for DMC and I think that one of the called for overdies and the other one I just pulled from my stash. This is beautiful. I'm stitching it on a piece of 36 count fantasy by Fortnite Fabrics and it's living in this um, pinecone bag that I made. And I didn't get too far on this one. I had to get a start. Here's where I got. So I love this fabric. I think I can fit um, Cora's really having a tough time up there. Um, I think I can fit, I think I was saying, I think I can fit another one of these on the bottom part of this, but I am loving how that is turning out. So I'll get back to that probably in the fall, I'm sure. Um, I do intend to touch all of my whips this year, somehow or another. I haven't quite figured out how um, I'm gonna work that out yet, but I know that I can do it. <laughs> um, another new start this year uh, was by Not Forgotten Farm. Uh, this is Old Mustard Moon. I started this with Julie, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World. Uh, she went to, I believe, Country Sampler and saw this stitched on Murky and suggested that we start it. And I said, yes, ma'am, absolutely. 
love this. Um, I'm stitching it in threads I chose from my stash and it lives in this um, t-shirt bag that I made. This is a t-shirt that I had um, I made into that bag and here is my start. This is 36 count murky. And when I'm stitching uh, things in hand, I do tr I do start, I go right to left instead of left to right, where if I'm stitching in a Q-snap, I go left to right. So I started on the right side and I worked my way down um, this little side page here as much as I could and across the top. I made some counting errors up top, so I had to <laughs> put in the alphabet to make sure that everything was going to match up okay. But I think I got a little bit of each of the colors in. Love that. Um, this next project is called Autumn Song. This is by Blackbird Designs. And this is a pattern for a sewing box. So this is the top of the box and needle keep. Um, there is the needle pattern there. And I don't know if you can tell around the edge of the sewing box is an alphabet. I am stitching this in all of the called for colors. And it lives in this cute little squirrel bag. Uh, it's being stitched on a piece of 28 count uh, country French spring meadow green linen and here's where I'm at I added in most of the bird I think this year and some of the leaves and I finished that acorn as well so this piece of uh, linen will fit all of the parts to the sewing box but this I don't know who makes this linen um, if it's oh, I mean this is so soft I, you don't think Witchell and you think that. I, I'm not sure if this is Witchell or not, but it is so, so nice to stitch on. All right, uh, another Blackbird design in my whip pile is Cats on Parade. Uh, you can do it this way, or you can finish it into a um, drum. And if you do it that way, there's a top that you can stitch. I don't know. I don't know how I'll finish this. I'm stitching this in a combination of the called for 3371 and this brown sulky, which they're not exactly the same color, but it gives a really nice full effect on the, um, the linen that I'm using. So really, really like that combination together. Uh, it lives in this black cat bag. And this is a piece of 32 count Lugana uh, by Ships Manor. I used to get their fabric of the month many moons ago. And here's where I'm at. I'm, I'm sorry that the lighting is terrible <laughs> tonight, but it is what it is. Um, this is a much more orange fabric than it's showing. But I did get quite a bit done on this this year. I brought the top border over. I filled in that moon. I put in some of those doodads. I brought the um, fence over to the next cat and I filled in a lot of the cat. So I was really happy with the progress that I made on that this year. This next project was a new start for me this year in October and that is Follow Me by The Primitive Needle. I am feeling very motivated to get this one done. This one is going to a new home when I'm finished, so I would like to work on this one soon. I'm stitching this in uh, Mrs. Sadis silk. This is um, their 310 alternative. It's living in this giant oops, bag. Um, and in this bag, it's full of all of my tombstone charts. Um, you can see I've got the um, Lay Light by Cozy Egg right in the front here. I want it to go on the other part of this fabric. This fabric is a 36 count Fortnite fabric. It's called Pick Me, Choose Me. 
and here's where I got this October. So that's not a shabby start. It's all one color, so that's nice. And like I said, um, Lay Light will go on the other half of this, but pretty happy with how that's turning out. Sometimes it's nice to just stitch in one color. Another new start from October of this year was the Mustard Seed Manor Sewing Book by Stacey Ash Primitus. This is what the front looks like. And then other directions for the inside, and you can also stitch this little pins. Um, thing. Place for your pins. I'm stitching this in threads from my stash, colors that I chose, and it's living in this living in this uh, black cat bag and this is a piece of 36 count linen I think this was a fortnight fabric but I over dyed it to make it what I wanted for this project and here's where I got to um, if I recall hopefully hopefully I made myself a note something is wrong up top <laughs> the house is up too high maybe I don't remember but either way a little wild looking but uh, I think once it's cropped in close for the book cover it'll be it'll be nice so there's that one uh, these next two share a piece of fabric um, this is the fabric is 36 count I think it's farm eggs by extra design it was maybe like an exclusive for kitten stitcher and the first project on, I'm going to show you on this um, fabric is Dane's Boarding School by the Exemplar Dane's Design Company. And I saw uh, Stephanie Webb of Lindy Stitches stitch this project on this fabric and I had the fabric in my stash and I went and I bought the, <laughs> I, I like paused the video, bought the pattern, got all the flosses that were called for because um, I wanted to stitch mine just like hers. It's so pretty. Like I said, I got all of the called for colors, which there are quite a few of. My piles are getting precarious here. And here's where I am. I can't really see on this one. So this is the top two pages. I did bring that border down to the bottom to make sure that everything was gonna fit nicely on here, and it does. So there's the top. Um, and then on the bottom half of this fabric is Jenny Bean's Gentle Spring Sampler by Shakespeare's Peddler. Looks like this. I've stitched Jenny Bean's Halloween and Jenny Bean's um, Christmas. So this is the spring and I don't think there's a specific Jenny Beans like summer pattern but I think that there is like a Jenny Beans garden maybe I'll have to look to round out the season now this one I am stitching um just in floss from my stash again there's a bunch of floss in here um and here's where I'm at so I still have a good chunk to do here. Um, I haven't put in the A, the M, or the Q because I'm not sure what colors I want to do those in. And then it also says uh, Gentle Mothers Lead the Way uh, on here and I don't think, like I think this said Gentle Mothers right there. I don't think I want to include that but I'm not sure if I want to put something um, else on it. And I do think there is one more little border on this far side here and I'm not sure if I'm gonna put that on there either but I don't know that this will get finished this year either of these two but they will definitely be worked on so. all right the next project is uh, another new start from this year this was um, part of the hashtag uh, stitch for sage for night spirit studio and this is the witchcraft woodcut like this i'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count uh, tea coffee dyed monaco using sulky and it lives in this little bat bag that i made 
and I got one page done Oops. on this. Again, in this lighting, this is looking harsh. It's not nearly as harsh in real life as it looks on here. I think it's the ring light that makes it look like extra, I don't know. But I've got one page done. So moving along on that. This next one was a new start two years ago and one of my very, very, very favorite projects. Uh, this is Halloween Barnyard by Not Forgotten Farm. Number one, I love donkeys. I used to live on a farm with donkeys. Uh, number two, my friend Olivia, Olivia B, stitched this and totally inspired me to do it as well. I love this project. It's one of those perfect projects where the fabric and the floss and just everything about it just feels really, really good. Um, the fabric that I'm using is a Fortnite Fabrics Phoenix Rising, and it lives in this um, Hillside Brookery bag uh, which is Olivia B shop this is like the perfect squishy beautiful project bag love it so much using the call for DMC with the exception of the black I'm using um, sulky black for better coverage and here's where it is so this year I believe I brought the border around I think I finished filling in the barn and the roof of the barn and I started on the donkey and I I think I started it incorrectly back here and then had to restart it over here I think that's what happened but I love that project so much okay I have no idea how long this is taking um because i've had to start and stop so many times it feels like i've been here for a while though we still have one and a little bit of piles left to go uh the next project that i have is the french kitchen this is by summer house stitch works um this is uh blueberries and thyme this was a four part series well i guess technically a five part series because they did come out with like a they came out with another one after this was a club I guess um, and I got all of the kits from was it inspired needles I can't remember I think that was in 2020 when I did that too um, but it came with things like it came with all the charts all of the floss all of the fabrics um, and other little accoutrement like this needle minder things like that so this is the one I'm working on right now I've completed two of them I have one yet to start um, this is being stitched on um, fabrics by Stephanie and friendship green using all of the call for losses this is in this black eyed Susan bag and here's where I'm at on this one um, yeah, so these are really pretty. I'll be, I'm hopefully gonna finish up this series this year. It's been hanging out for a while, it feels like. All right, next I have Weatherwise by The Prairie Schooler. Um, this chart is Seen Better Days. This is the one that uh, Cora sat on, <laughs> and, like crumpled. Um, obviously not one of the uh, cardstock charts, but I am doing this top one here. This was, um, a unicorn chart of mine for a long time and I was so excited when they reprinted it and I don't know what took me so long to uh, finally start it but this year was the year and um, what was it sometime in the summertime I started it I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count driftwood by color and cotton uh, using all the called for DMC uh, I did pull a different color for this house um, the called for did not look like that so but I can't remember off the top of my head what that was anyways it was in this Maryland bag and here's where I got so that's not a terrible start there prairie schoolers are so fun they're so um, relaxing to stitch the big chunks of color they're just a joy so 
wait to get back to that one. All right. And here is the last pile. Right. Uh, this one I almost UFO'd this year, but decided uh, to keep going um, at the suggestion of many of you. And that is Poe the Raven by the Witch's Stitcher. I don't mind the coffee. I'm stitching this on 30 count uh, Dark Spell Linen by Primitive Hair uh, using some black Mosel silk and it lives in this uh, little mousy bag here. And I'm stitching this over one and here's where I'm at. So the reason I almost UFO'd this is because really this is, it would not have fit over two on this fabric. And um, I didn't realize that this fabric comes in like a, a big piece and a little piece and this was the little piece. Um, it wouldn't fit over two. So I decided to do it over one, but if, by doing it over one, it kind of, like if I was going to frame it like up close, you kind of lose all of the fabric. But a lot of people said just to keep going with it and just frame it big and or maybe make a shadow box out of it or something. So I am going with it and I'm continuing on the journey. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's where that one is. I don't think that one, once I finish that tombstone in the middle, there's really not that much <laughs> stitching left after that. So we'll see if we can finish that up this year. I'm not sure. Um, my next project is by Barbara Anna Designs, and that is the Rampant Cats Sampler. Just like this. I do love this pattern. Um, I was having some trouble with the colors, and I still haven't fully decided what to do about that. So this one, um, I just need to make some decisions about it. It's being stitched on a piece of 36 count barley by Color and Cotton, and it lives in this uh, little doggy Halloween bag, which is very cute. Um, like I said, I've been using the DMC, but there was one or two that I wasn't happy with how they were showing up, so we'll see. But here's where I am. Not quite done <laughs> halfway yet. Uh, let's see, but it's this color right here that I'm not happy with, and I need to figure out what I'm going to do about it. But that's again for future Megan's future Megan's problem she'll figure it out <laughs> my next project is another one of my very very favorites another not forgotten farm probably no surprise there and that is Nantucket Broom Ride I started this in October this year and I love it just like with Halloween Barnyard this is just the I don't know the combination of the chart and the threads and the fat it's just it's just perfect i love it i'm stitching this with the called for dmc on a piece of 28 count ships manor november fabric of the month these are had to have been from maybe 2017 or 2018 so when i was buying those uh this project lives in one of my very favorite bags my janet jabber bag i love this bag and here's where I got. So I hmm, did all of the outline. This fabric is like weighty. I don't know. It just has such a nice hand feel. Um, so I did the whole outline and I did the bottom, the waves, and it's kind of hard to see, but I did start outlining the whale to get up to the witch because I was stitching this in October and I wanted to stitch that little witch. So I did, um, but that one's great. I really, really like that one. This next project, I don't have the cover photo for. Again, I'm not sure how much editing I'm doing, so I might uh, put a picture in here. And that project is Painted Wings by Kathy Barrick. Uh, I started this with my friend Anne this year and I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count Tuscan by Color and Cotton using a silk pack that I got from um, Fillside Rookery, again Olivia's store. These are the beautiful colors. 
beautiful, beautiful, and it's living in this uh, pretty mushroom bag. And I did not get very far on this. Um, I had to do some frogging. I stitched part of the alphabet in the wrong spot, and I think that kind of discouraged me a little bit. Also, I bought this chart as a PDF from Kathy's store, and it's I printed it, and it's hard for me to read. So I need to, and I don't, I don't typically. Um, stitch from a device so I need to think on that a little bit but this is where I got <laughs> not too too far um, I can't remember because I don't have the chart here in front of me I, maybe there's two like finish this one and then one more row with alphabet and then you get down into all of the big beautiful butterflies but I'll get there yeah, I'll definitely get some love this year My next project is by Modern Folk Embroidery, and this is Move Forward in Love. This was the Pride Sale from 2022, like this. I'm stitching this on Sea of Fog by Fortnite Fabric in a 36 count using the Call of Four DMC in this um, little rainbowy bag that I made. And here's where I'm at. So, so beautiful and bright and colorful and um, for some reason I've had trouble like kind of finding a groove with this project but we'll get there no worries if I can get to the halfway point this year I'll be really happy with that so love that one uh, this next one is a um, project that I am stitching as a gift and I got caught up with part of it and I think I'm ready to move on <laughs> from that. Um, I'd like to get working on this again. I'd, um, <clears throat> this is Lady Orchid Moth by Nora Corbett. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'll probably start stitching on this again when my orchid starts blooming. I saw that her little bloom shoot, I don't know what that's called, <laughs> uh, is out. <laughs> um, so my hang up here is with the skin up top. I'll show you, I don't like, I just don't like how it looks and I don't know how I want to fix it, but I, I've got a lot left to stitch. I've got plenty of time to come back to that. So that's that project. I'm stitching with all the called for DMC and whatever else um, it needs on a piece of 28 count green apple. It's an extra design that lives in this. Maryland inspired bag as well and here's where I am so this is the top half of the design so as you can see I still have plenty to go at the bottom but I just I don't know maybe it's looking a little better in camera but I swear in real life the contrast between the darker color into the lighter color just looks so harsh that I don't I don't love it and so I don't know. I don't know what I'll do about that, but I will be working on it soon. I would, like I said, I'm stitching it as a gift for somebody. They have no idea that I'm doing that. So there's no like time frame or anything. I mean, I think I've been working on this for two years already um, that goes along with it, but I would like, you know, to have it done. <laughs> uh, this next project is another Not Forgotten Farm, and that is Folk House. This I started not this year for my birthday, last year for my birthday. I'm stitching it with the called for DMC on another piece of extra design uh, linen. This is a 32 count in sampler khaki, and I'm sure you're shocked that this is in another Maryland bag. And here's where I'm at. Uh, so this year, last year I got some of the outline done and this year I worked on filling in the roof and this flower and the chimneys and then I started down here in the like trim I guess and I added in this chair this did not get a whole lot of love this year uh, my next project is uh, one of my favorites that I hardly ever work on and that is the tiny modernist moon phase bell pool like this. These are the most beautiful moons I've ever seen in cross stitch. I absolutely love this project. I think it is stunning. 
see, I'm running out of places to put things. Uh, this lives in this quilting kinko bag. And my threads for this are always a disaster. I even put thread drops in there to try to um, lessen the mess. And as you can see, that has done nothing. <laughs> um, I'm using the call for DMC and I'm stitching this on a piece of 36 count Timberwolf. Is that right? Yes, by Seraphim Fabrics. And here's where I am. So this year, I, I think this one might have been done. I don't remember truly, uh, but I definitely put in this big full moon and I brought the um, border all the way down. So I've got a bunch of this fabric left, which is great because it's gorgeous. Um, yeah. So I don't know that I'll finish that this year, but I would definitely like to get at least another phase or two to finished. All right. I think everything we have left um, are things that we've that we've that I have started um, in the last few months. So my next is Ellen Harrison, eighteen eighty nine. Uh, this was my birthday start for this year. I started with my friend Emily and my friend Laura. It's the um, BAD, the big ass deer, Sal. As you can see, I love a big white deer. Um, this one gave me struggles trying to get started, but once I did, uh, I absolutely love it. I'm stitching it with the color and cotton conversion that Emily created when she went to their shop. Beautiful, beautiful. It lives in this bag that my friend Erin made for me. And I'm stitching it on a piece of 40 count overcast, also by Coloring Cotton. And got one page done. So she's not a huge sampler, but there is a lot of stitching at the bottom. <laughs> um, like a lot of fill in stitching, but that's okay. That's good comfort stitching. So here we are on that one. This next one I just started um, in the beginning of December, and that is Ellen Ford's work by Mary Wynn Farm. Um, I thought that this sampler had um, kind of Christmassy vibes with the colors, and it's charted in Gentle Art Simply Wool, uh, which this was my first time working with the wool, and I absolutely love, 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 love working with it. So. I'll be looking forward to finding some other patterns um, to stitch in wool as well. Here are the colors. These are all the called for, uh, with the exception of, uh, let's see, this driftwood was called for, but to me, it, it, was, it didn't look necessarily like how the cover looked, so I am substituting out this um, barn gray. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count um, silk weaver in days gone by. And it lives in this little doggy bag. And here's where I got. So I got the outside border all the way done. Um, I had a couple of different dye locks in my uh, wool. So I wanted to make sure that the border all got stitched in the same. Oh, I did that and then I did um, this little page here. So cute. I like her a lot. And then is this my last one? Yes, my very last work in progress. <laughs> um, this was a new start that I started on December 21st and I've barely had any time to work on it, but that's okay. I started this with my friend Rebecca. Uh, December 21st was my mom's birthday and this made me think of her. This is Winter by Birds of a Feather. This is a giant chart. It is $2.95 by uh, $3.84. She's big. So I just have a little start up here in this corner. Uh, I'm stitching her with colors that I pulled from my stash. It's kind of a mess there, but that's okay. Uh, she lives in this patchwork bag with her sisters. They're all in there. I've got all four of them. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 38 count uh, cloister cream by Legacy Lennon. 
and uh, it's still in the cuse net because I'm currently working on it but that's that's as far as I got so not not very far at all on this big big chart but that's okay I'm gonna work on it again tonight and I think I might keep it in the Q snap um, for the next few weeks and just try to pick away at it a little bit I guess we'll see if I do that um, for reference like this is like almost the size of my hand right and um, that is literally just here <laughs> so she's big um, yes so those are all of my works in progress. Um, I love every single one of them and I'm excited to work on all of them and I'm excited to start more things and I really need to find a way without putting pressure on myself to um, get some more finishing done this year. I was thinking about doing a like a previously finished but unfinished parade. <laughs> um, but I think that a lot of them are still the same projects from when I did that two years ago. So I don't know. You guys tell me. Do you if you want to see them all again, I will pull them all out again happily and share them with you. Um, but you let me know what you think. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. I still have some more pondering to do on my plans for this year, and I'm sure as I make some of those decisions, I will be sharing them with you all. Um, I hope everybody has a very happy new year, and um, yeah, love you all.